So the bad sweeteners to avoid are Hello angels and welcome to the Glucose Goddess Show. My name is Jessie Inchospe, I'm a French biochemist and I really want you to understand food and your body. I'm obsessed with helping you figure all this out. And in this episode, I want to discuss one of the most misunderstood topics in nutrition out there. One of the most common questions I get and one of the biggest sources of confusion and one of the biggest tricks that food companies use to make you buy their food products. I'm talking about sugar and the notion that some sugars are good for us and some sugars are bad for us. And then we're also going to cover sweeteners and whether they are better for us than sugar or worse for us than sugar. Okay, let's do this. I'm so excited. In order to discuss this topic, I want to tell you a story. So one of my readers, Olivia, she was 18 at the time of this story. She comes from Argentina and she told me her story and she used to have quite a few struggles. Bad acne on her face, exhaustion, lack of focus, really low energy. And her breakfast used to be a hot chocolate, a slice of toast and some jam on it. She told me that she went to her friends telling them that she didn't feel that well and her friends suggested that maybe her breakfast was causing the issues and the friends said, hey, I think what you're doing is you're eating like bad sugar. You should switch your breakfast to eating something way better for you like a fruit smoothie. So Olivia changed her breakfast of hot chocolate and toast and jam and replaced it with a fruit smoothie. She made it with mangoes, apples, and bananas and kiwis. So a pure fruit smoothie in the morning. Now, she thought that she would get better. She thought that she would start to feel more energy, that her skin would get clearer, that her brain would work better. Turns out, my dears, that this new breakfast, the fruit smoothie, actually made her feel worse. Her skin got worse, her energy got worse, she could not focus in school anymore. She had thought that the sugar from the fruit smoothie was good sugar, that it was sugar that was going to help her have energy, that it was sugar that was good for her brain, whereas the sugar from the hot chocolate and the toast and jam was bad sugar. And indeed, we've been sort of indoctrinated with this, this idea that sugar from fruit is good for us and is healthy, whereas sugar that is refined and the white powdered sugar is bad for us. So many of us believe that fruit smoothies, fruit juices contain good sugar because we've been told that if something comes from fruit, then it's going to be really good for our body and it's going to promote health and it's going to help us feel better. And this is what the food industry really wants you to believe. But the reality is, my dears, that believing that some sugar is good and some sugar is bad is fundamentally misunderstanding the sugar molecule and what's actually going on. And here's the deal. The sugar that is in a hot chocolate or in crystallized white cane sugar, that sugar molecule, sucrose, is the exact same molecule as the sugar molecule, sucrose, that is in fruit, that is in a banana or an apple or a kiwi or a mango. Sugar is sugar for the body. The body doesn't make a difference between, oh, this sugar came from a cake or a hot chocolate and this sugar came from a fruit. In terms of the molecules, it's all the same stuff and it's all going to be processed in the same way in your body. And in the case of Olivia, she was actually eating more sugar in the fruit smoothie than she was in her previous breakfast. So overall, she was creating a bigger glucose spike in her body and her health was getting worse. So when I spoke to her, I encouraged her to switch to a savory breakfast built around protein with no sugar except whole fruit if she wanted for taste. And that started solving all of her issues. So I want you to understand that sugar is sugar no matter where it comes from, whether it's in a candy bar or in a fruit juice, it's all the same molecule. Now what does differ is the wrapping the sugar comes in. So if you take the case of a whole fruit, for example, like a banana or an apple, yes, there are sugar molecules in that piece of whole fruit, and they are the same sugar molecules as in a chocolate cake. But in the piece of whole fruit, there's also fiber. 
and water. And the fiber is the key here because the fiber in a piece of a whole fruit is going to slow down how quickly the sugar molecules get to your bloodstream. So the fiber is going to reduce the impact of the sugar on your body. So eating a piece of whole fruit is always 100% the best thing to eat if you want to eat something sweet because of the fiber that it contains. Hey, really quickly, if you can't always do my food hacks and you want to eat the carbs that you love with less impact on your glucose levels, I created a capsule just for that. It's called Anti-Spike Formula. You take two before a meal, it cuts the glucose spike of carbs by up to 40%. 100% made out of plants and tested by over 25 clinical trials. Link is in the description. Okay, back to the episode. Now, the issue arises when we denature a piece of fruit. So if you take an apple, for example, and you smoothie it, you blend it or you juice it, what you're doing is you're damaging or removing that protective fiber. As a result, for example, if you juice an apple, you're getting rid of all of the protective fiber. That's the matter that you're throwing away. That's the hard stuff that you're throwing away when you juice a fruit. And you're only extracting the sugar molecules from that apple. And those sugar molecules are exactly the same sugar molecules as you will find in a can of soda, or in a cake, or in a candy bar, or in ice cream. There's no difference in those sugar molecules. The only thing that matters is, is the sugar still in the piece of whole fruit, in which case it's better for you, or has the sugar been extracted from that whole fruit and turned into something else, in which case it's just free-flowing sugar, just like table sugar, just like white sugar, etc. So I really want you to remember this. It's not because sugar came from a fruit, that it is miraculously better for your body or that it is miraculously healthy. It's all the same stuff. So let's take that further. If sugar extracted from fruit is the same as white table sugar, you know what else is the same as white table sugar? Brown sugar, molasses, maple syrup, agave syrup, all of these other forms of sugar are also the same exact molecules. So don't be fooled into thinking that brown sugar is better for your body than white sugar. Brown sugar is simply white sugar that has been tinted with molasses during the production process to make it appear more, you know, better for you, to make it appear healthier. It's not healthier, it's the exact same molecules. Same with coconut sugar, it's all the same molecules. Same with agave syrup, it's all the same molecules. Same with maple syrup. The only thing that differs is the ratio of glucose to fructose in that sugar, but the molecules are the same. And in fact, when you look at the glucose versus fructose ratio, you'll notice that things like agave syrup are actually way worse for you than table sugar, because agave syrup has more fructose in it, which is a worse molecule for our body. Okay, and now let's discuss honey. Okay, so I know honey has a really good reputation and people believe that it has all of these incredible virtues and it's super healthy and you should take it when you have a cold and you should put it in your tea in the morning, etc. Here's the deal with honey. First of all, most commercial honey that you will find in the supermarket is not actually honey. It's just something to made to be look like honey, but it's just liquid sugar packaged in a little bottle. Second, even if you're getting the organic, raw, local honey, it is still the same sugar molecules as table sugar. It's still sucrose in there and glucose and fructose. Your body is going to treat those sugar molecules exactly the same. Your body doesn't care whether those sugar molecules came from a local honey producer or if they came from cane sugar and are in your kitchen and are what you use when you make a cake. To your body, it's all the same molecules. So when you are eating honey, you are eating sugar. It is also gonna be processed by your body the same as regular sugar. It's also gonna to lead to big glucose spikes and inflammation and glycation, etc. So why am I telling you all this? I don't wanna depress you because I know a lot of you like honey. I just want you to understand that when you're eating honey, you should be doing it for pleasure, not for health. You should pick the sugar that you like the best because they are all the same. So whether you like brown cane sugar, white cane sugar, maple syrup, agave, honey, etc., it's all the same molecules. So pick the one that you prefer and that gives you the most pleasure and happiness because there's not one that's healthier than the other, really. They're kind of all equivalent. Now, I know what you're going to say, what about the antioxidants in honey? Well, 
Eating honey for the antioxidants is not a good move. Because yes, honey does contain antioxidants, but honey also contains a large amount of sugar. If you want antioxidants, it's much better to eat some fruit and vegetables that don't come with this crazy glucose and fructose spike as well. As an example, you can find the same amount of antioxidants in one teaspoon of honey or in one sixth of a blueberry. You can get all the amount of antioxidants in a teaspoon of honey by just eating one sixth of a blueberry. So if you eat one whole blueberry, which is tiny, you're getting as many antioxidants as in six teaspoons of honey without all of those grams of sugar. So honey is not the best way to get antioxidants. I don't want you to be fooled. I want you to really understand and be conscious and aware of what you're eating and what's going on. So to repeat, all sugars are similar. Have the one you like best. Even if you love honey, go for it. Just remember that you're having it for pleasure, not for health, and that you should be using some of my glucose hacks to reduce its impact on your body. There's a link in the description of this episode if you want my 10 glucose hacks on how to eat sugar and when in a way that's less damaging to your glucose levels. Something else to know is that food manufacturers love giving new names to sugar in order for it to look healthier when you look at the nutrition facts on the back of a package. So there's a ton of alternative names for sugar molecules, notably fruit puree, glucose syrup, high fructose corn syrup, saccharose, maltol, palm sugar, panela, cane sugar, corn sweetener, corn syrup solids, fruit juice concentrate. If you see the words fruit juice concentrate on the back of a label, that means that it is simply sugar molecules that have been extracted from fruit. It's all the same molecules. Don't be fooled. There's a lot of these extra names, alternative names for sugar. They're also linked in the description of this video. So you know all of the tricks that food companies are using to hide behind some fancy names to not tell you they're just putting sugar in their products. So if you see any of these linked in the description of this episode, you can know for sure that it's just sugar molecules. Now, I wanna cover something else. In terms of food packaging, food manufacturers, tricks that marketers use to make their products seem healthier than they are, there's something that really annoys me, and it is 100% natural on a packaging. What does 100% natural on a packaging actually mean? It simply means that the product doesn't have any synthetic ingredients or synthetic additives or artificial products like color additives, etc. It does not mean that the product doesn't contain any sugar. As an example, let me pull up right now a yogurt pot. And as you can see, this yogurt pot says 100% natural on it. However, when you look at the ingredients, what do you see there? cane sugar, because 100% natural does not mean that the product doesn't contain any sugar. It just means it doesn't contain any synthetic ingredients. But you can see a big bag of white cane sugar with 100% natural on it. And similarly, you might see a product that says no sugar added. Well, there again, it's a marketing strategy because no sugar added just means that they didn't add any sugar during the process of creation of the product. It does not mean that the product doesn't contain any sugar. I know it's so annoying. They could, for example, have used a bunch of fruit as the base of the product, extracted a bunch of sugar molecules from it, put it in the product, and still call it no added sugars, just because they started with a piece of whole fruit and then processed it. So if you see 100% natural, if you see organic, if you see no sugar added, if you see gluten-free, fat-free, etc., any health halos, that's what they're called, health halos that you see on packaging, you should not trust them. Always look on the back and you'll probably find sugar in there. And again, it's okay to eat foods that have sugar in them, but I want you to know and not be fooled thinking that those products are good for your health. Products with sugar in them are there for our pleasure and our enjoyment. They're not health promoting. 
and we should use the glucose hacks that I share in order to reduce their impact on our body. So we can still eat the sugar we like with less impact on our health because sugar is not good for our health. So a few hacks, a few examples of some hacks are put some clothing on your carbs. So whenever you have sugar, never have it on an empty stomach or alone. Put some clothing like protein, fat or fiber on it. Maybe have a vinegar drink before you eat the sugar. Maybe use one of my anti-spike capsules. And I have a ton more of these tricks. Again, linked in the PDF in the description of this episode if you want to see them all. Now, for the big debate. Let's touch on the topic of sweeteners. So when I talk about sweeteners, I mean products that don't contain any calories, but that have a sweet taste. So we're talking maltitol, stevia, allulose, monk fruit, erythritol, xylitol, etc. Now, sweeteners cause a lot of debate. Here's the fundamental scientific fact. Some sweeteners do cause side effects on our health, like insulin spikes, like glucose spikes, like damage to our microbiome, like leading to more cravings. But you can actually separate sweeteners into two categories. One category is try to avoid these sweeteners. The other category is these are probably pretty safe with the information we have right now and are a good alternative to sugar if you want to reduce how much sugar you're consuming. So the bad sweeteners to avoid are aspartame, maltitol, sucralose, xylitol, and acesulfame K. The better sweeteners the ones that cause less impact on our physical and mental health are allulose, stevia, erythritol, and monk fruit. That being said, it's really important that if you're somebody who uses sweeteners, and you've seen a lot of headlines recently about sweeteners causing cancer, etc., just remember that even if we do find some associations between sweeteners and negative health outcomes, it's always better to have a diet soda than it is to have a regular soda with 25 grams of real sugar in it. Because those 25 grams of real sugar are gonna cause way more damage than any amount of sweetener in a diet soda. And I know this is a controversial thing to say, and I honestly don't understand why, because we have so much data showing the damaging effects of real sugar on our body. It leads to type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, a lot of issues short-term like cravings, fatigue, brain fog, skin issues, hormonal problems, and a lot of long-term chronic health problems. So if you are a diet soda drinker, don't switch to the regular soda. Of course, diet soda is not good for you. It would be way better to drink water, but don't switch back to regular soda because that contains so much damaging sugar. So to recap everything, my dears, have any type of sugar you like. They're all the same for your body, whether it's honey, agave, white cane sugar, brown sugar, maple syrup, etc. Just use my hacks to make sure that you're reducing their impact on your health. And don't be fooled by any of the tricks that marketing companies use to make you think that their product is good for you. Do not be fooled. And finally, if you're somebody who uses sweeteners, try to switch from the sort of less good category to the better category of sweeteners. And do not switch back from a diet soda to a regular soda. And that's all we have time for today. Resources in the description of this episode. You can get my hacks, you can get the list of all of the different names of sugar that food companies use. So do not leave before you get this really important, helpful content. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next time.